After I was cheated on by my ex-wife, I fell for a new woman who cheated on me. Karma struck back hard. I, 37M, have been with my wife, 26F, for five years, and married four years. We have three kids from her previous relationships, two boys and one girl between the ages of five and eight. I really love her and her kids. Things were perfect until three or four months ago. I've had three big promotions in five years. We bought a house last year. She stays home with the kids and is trying to make a social media career happen. I have always been on the fence about having kids, but she really wanted us to have one together so I agreed to try to have my vasectomy reversed. She's is seven months pregnant now. We were so fucking happy. My ex-wife, 38F, divorced me in 2019 and moved about two hours away a few months into the pandemic. Our divorce was amicable, but once it was finalized, I never heard from her again, even when I would wish her well on birthdays and holidays. I even sent her a graduation gift when I heard that she finished her PhD program. Other people in our social circle, including my parents and sister-in-law, who sent her a gift received handwritten thank you cards. I didn't get so much as a text. My ex-wife is a really kind and thoughtful person, and a woman I knew would have at least sent a thank you text if her worst enemy sent her a gift. Even though we broke up I didn't think she hated me. My best friend, 35M, and I were best friends since college. He's the best person I know, and at least 10 people think he's their best friend, but he said that I was his always. We kind of lost touch during the pandemic. We live two hours apart, and he is a lawyer and teaches classes at a university, so he is really busy. I have a really busy career and a new wife and three kids. I didn't really realize that the texts between us were fewer and that the last time he finally replied to me was in late 2021. He also falls off the face of the earth when he gets with a new girl and then when things cool off, we all hear from him more. We have always been the kind of friends that could go an extended period of time without communicating and then pick up right where we left off. I kept saying that I would eventually call him when things were less busy. My wife and I went to visit the city he and my ex-wife live in last summer for a week, and I tried calling him a couple of times to meet up, but he never answered. I was sad but just figured he was busy with work or obsessed with a new girlfriend. I have other friends there, so I got to see them. Then I went to the city again by myself in October for a Halloween party. I figured he'd be at this party, and I was psyched that I'd get to see him then. He was there. When I went to say hi and hug him, he looked a little surprised and gave me a weak hug. I told him that I was there during the summer, and that I tried calling him so we could hang out. He just said, yeah, I was on my honeymoon that week, sorry, I didn't get back to you. I was really shocked to hear that he'd gotten married, and a little hurt that my best friend got married without me, even knowing he had a serious girlfriend, but still happy for him. Like I said, he was a great guy, and girls love him. I spit out a rush of questions like who is she, where is she, what's her name, what's she like, where do you meet her, how long have you been together? He paused for a moment, and then just bluntly said, it's ex-wife's name. My ex-wife doesn't have a unique name or anything, but it isn't the most common name either and instantly, I knew that it was her. I can't describe how it felt to hear those two words come out of his mouth. I felt sick to my stomach, and I immediately wanted to die. I have never felt like that before. I just said, what the fuck? He told me that I didn't get to be mad because I broke her heart and they didn't start dating until two years after we got divorced and that I chose to be with some waitress anyway. I drank the rest of the weekend because it was the only way I was able to sleep. I feel betrayed by both of them. My best friend since I was 20 years old married my ex-wife behind my fucking back. I was married to her for six years and they were never even friends and now they are in love with each other. I also found out that he talked shit about my current wife and me behind my back and never liked her. I went back home and I know that I was distant with my wife and the kids because I was just hurting so much. After a couple of weeks, we had a big fight and she called me out on being distant and accused me of cheating. I finally came clean and told her about my ex and my best friend which she scoffed about and said she'd known about them for a long time now because of social media. I flew into a rage and we fought for hours. She betrayed me by not telling me the entire time she knew. She didn't say anything when I mentioned my best friend not returning my calls or messages. I didn't get to sleep before going to work 
and after work I just stayed with my parents for a few days. When I finally went back home we got into another fight, where she accused me of still being in love with my ex and said that I wouldn't care if I wasn't. I called her stupid and said that she wouldn't understand because she doesn't have any friends. I wouldn't care if my ex-wife got married to anyone else if it wasn't my best friend. I don't see what is so hard to understand about that. We made up eventually but I feel sick to my stomach every day and things aren't the same in our relationship. I love my wife but I've come to realize it's not the same way I loved my ex-wife. My wife doesn't love me the same way my ex-wife did either. I've started to regret the things that led to our divorce because we were really happy until the moment she left me I don't even have my best friend to call because he's too busy fucking my ex-wife to care about me anymore. Everything feels empty and like a lie now. A lot of friends agree that they both betrayed me but think I need to move on. Even my dad and brother told me to get over it. My sister-in-law yelled at me and my mom tries to comfort me, but I know she's overhearing about my problems. I have to pretend I'm okay but I'm not. No one gives a shit about mental health when it comes to men. I bought up couples therapy to my wife but she said that she thinks we are okay since we work through things. Guess I have to pretend for the rest of my life now, because divorce is not on the table. I need advice on what to do and how to get closure. I am thinking of driving to their city to just show up and force them to talk to me so I can move on. Is that too much to ask? How do I get my wife to see that it is hard to trust her after knowing she kept a big secret from me for a long time? Update. The overwhelming consensus here is that I am a piece of shit which is true. The other consensus is that I need therapy. I asked my brother to help me, but neither of us even know where to begin to find a therapist. He said he would ask his wife to help us and she texted me this morning and said she was only helping because of my brother. I guess that's fair. Comments Republic of Gary I called her stupid and said that she wouldn't understand because she doesn't have any friends. Well done, professor. Video slacker. Apparently neither does he. If your best friend doesn't speak to you for three years, they may be your best friend, but you are not theirs. Dalton 402. Right, the timelines are making me think something big is missing here. It's 2024. You've been with your wife for five years and your ex divorced you in 2019, which is five years ago. I have to ask, did you cheat on your ex with your wife? It is February, so I imagine there is an overlap between you being in a relationship with your wife and your ex divorcing you. Your ex ignoring you and your best friend being standoffish and telling you that you broke her heart screams that you cheated. Your wife accusing you of cheating shows that she knows that she married a cheater who is still obsessed with his ex-wife. I really don't know what you expect. You created this mess. So live with it. Deleted. Op calls it an amicable divorce and then his friend says he broke his ex-wife's heart and he doesn't elaborate on either lol, I wonder why. I commit to learn about. Left her for a waitress is barely mentioned when he sees the best friend at the Halloween party. Yeah, Op is leaving out a massive detail. Sorry I guess. A 21-year-old waitress with three children, when he was 32, that youngster never had a chance. She was just an exhausted bundle of poor choices lined up to make her next one. Him? I honestly can't even blame the current wife slash affair partner. She seems as much a victim to me as the ex-wife. Deleted. Read the comment from OOP. Oh, he fucked around and found out, then still acts clueless why she wants nothing to do with him, why his BFF slow burned him and distanced himself and makes sense why the comment at the Halloween party about a waitress. OP cheated on his ex with a 21-year-old waitress with three kids, got divorced and married the waitress. Yeah, BFF and ex didn't betray him, he betrayed his ex by cheating and I bet you no one in his family or friend's circle knows the real story. They probably side with the ex and BFF if they knew. And Spoo 321. So did you cheat on your ex-wife with your current wife, Ita, he cheated. Ja Wolfington. Yes, OOP admits to cheating in the comments. He is seriously asking why his room smells after shitting his bed. Okay, structure 6795. 
Never heard of that analogy. It's beautiful. Update two months later. This is kind of an update to my last post a few months ago, and I am also hoping for advice on how to best navigate this. I have tried a couple of times to write this update, but I get stressed trying to make it all make sense, so I will just dump it all here and hope it comes out okay. I guess I should start by saying that I had slash have a lot more issues than my original post addressed, or than I even recognized at the time. Therapy is helping me uncover a lot of it, and it's really uncomfortable on the good days and crushing on the bad days. So many people talk about how they feel so much better after going to therapy, but I feel worse. I'm still going to go though because for as much as it sucks, it is helping me learn better ways of dealing with things. It is also helping me explain myself to me a little better. Like I am a shitty person, but I wasn't always a shitty person, and I am starting to see where it all went wrong. I feel like understanding that is the only way I can address those things and then become a better person. I did inpatient therapy then after my release. I see a therapist in her office once a week and meet virtually once a week. I also see a psychiatrist once every two weeks and started on some medications. It's weird how I can kind of see them helping parts of my brain but dulling other parts and making my body not feel the best. I try to explain it to the doctor but he just tells me it is going to take some time for them to fully work and that eventually I will get used to it. My wife had the baby, but while I was away she told me about the possibility of the baby not being mine. I grieved that so much, but I decided it wasn't not much good in dwelling on it too much right now until we knew for sure once she is born. The results came back last week and she isn't mine. We haven't made any decisions right now about our relationship but are living together for the sake of the kids and her recovery from having the baby. She said that if I didn't want to be with her anymore, she'd go back to her home state with her mom and stepdad. She also mentioned that she knew she wouldn't get alimony or child support because of our state, but I told her I would help her get back home and on her feet if that's what ended up happening. Since I got back home, I have stepped up more and been more active as a dad which has been really good for me. Being a responsible and present father helps me forget about all of the other stuff in the moment, but it would be a lie for me to say that I don't worry about how much it'll hurt to lose them if we break up since they are not biologically or legally mine. I also just worry about them a lot and think they deserve to have a safe and stable, happy childhood. I'm really sad that the baby isn't mine. I wanted her to be mine more than anything in the world. But I find it really hard to be angry with my wife for some reason. I cheated on my first wife with her so it's kinda karma in a way. And what could I really expect when our relationship started the way that it did? Plus, there's this other part of me that understands that she is a deeply damaged person like me, I don't really want to go into a lot of details, but we both lived through some similar shit happening to us when we were kids that bonded us. Neither of us really dealt with it, but I thought that I was okay because I grew up privileged and she didn't, so I always had more opportunities than she did. I also thought that since I didn't think about it as much I was okay. She thought about it all the time and she wasn't okay. My ex-wife is an amazing woman and she deserves to be happy. I sent her an email and just kind of poured my heart out about how sorry I am for hurting her. I would rip my heart out to give to her if it helped her heal from the heartbreak I caused her. I said in the email that I didn't expect a reply and that I would never attempt contact with her again after that. She got in contact with my brother a few times to check on me, and she's called me twice, and we talked for a few hours about everything. She's really happy, and she's doing well. I'm proud of her, and she deserves to be happy. I am really lucky that I had the years that I had with her, but now it is time to accept how I screwed up and try my best to do better going forward. I don't think I will ever contact her again, but would be happy to hear from her if she ever reaches out again. It still hurts a little, but I understand now that that door is fully closed. The door with my friend is closed too. We haven't spoken and we probably never will, but that's okay. I found out from other friends that he was always in love with my ex-wife and that he was the person who convinced her to move to where they live now after our divorce. I think knowing helps because the story I created in my head was far worse. I also understand now why no one wanted to tell me. My brother and I got so close again, which his wife isn't the happiest about. 
I'm not sure where I would be right now if it wasn't for him. We invited them over during the weekend and at one point, she and I were in a room alone for a few minutes and I told her that I was sorry and she just hugged me and told me that I was stupid but that she knows I am trying. I also have two really good friends who have been there for me through everything, even though they have been clear from the very beginning that they have not agreed with my actions. All of them are more than I deserve. My relationship with my parents isn't in the best place right now. They're both really mad at me because my brother confronted them about what I told him related to the thing that happened when I was a kid. They feel like his is blaming them and that they did the best they could for me. I think that they are really embarrassed too. I get it and I don't really blame them. I don't think they knew what to do. But I am not going to apologize to them either so until I do, they don't really want to be around me. I'm not sure that this is the update that anyone wanted to read, but it's all I've got. My life is still very much in limbo, maybe even shambles. But I am doing my best to fix it and to fix some of the hurts I have caused others. I would recommend therapy as much as everyone recommended it to me, but I would caution to add that it requires a lot of honesty to work and that sometimes that kind of honesty reopens old wounds. But those wounds are dirty and infected, so you've got to clean them up and treat them to get better, which is going to hurt, but I am not sure there is any other way. How do I make the best decision for the kids and for myself? Should I try to work things out with my wife or would it be the best to make a clean break? Comments Lube for sale, no refunds. The current wife had two kids when they met. She was also in a relationship with another man, so they were both cheating with each other. She had a third kid while they were enjoying their affairs, and apparently it was in question whether the dad was her ex or the married co-worker she was fucking. Now fourth kid has been born. Pacific star entries. After all the obvious OMG, the ending, about the brother being angry at their parents for not protecting slash caring about OOP as a child alludes to some sinister incident that happened to him. And his wife and him trauma bonded from their past, I mean she had three kids by 21 so yeah, this is really freaking sad. Yanigan, yeah that stuck out to me too. I'm not absolving the guy of anything, but this is a tale of two very damaged people. I'm not surprised it ended up the way it did. Chuckums, what do they say, hurt people hurt people? Op is definitely responsible for their choices, but it's sad to watch them realize where they are and the path that led them there. Princess Alice, I agree. As much as the cheating disgusts me and he's getting his karma for stepping out on his marriage there, all I felt was sadness for everyone involved here. The 21-yo with three kids to three dads born within three years, OOP who's clearly repressed feelings regarding his own childhood trauma, Ike about you but I'm getting CSA from it, and potentially dealing with resurfaced memories, the ex-wife for being cheated on, the brother for finding out what his brother had gone through when they were kids. Actually, scratch that, the best friend and OOP's parents are just shit. No sadness for them, only side eye. AS we tweet Rose, yep. Same with the wife, he says he comes from money but the wife didn't so she had to have the babies and his parents were able to pay to fix the problem. Without knowing anything, I'm thinking an older adult in both cases. Princess Alice. See, the oldest is eight, so I'm thinking the kids weren't a result of the assault, but a result of the trauma from the assault. I took it to mean that he had a comfortable life with no other hardships compared to the wife who had additional poverty to contend with. It wasn't that his parents paid to fix it, he just thought because he didn't grow up poor that his trauma didn't matter as much. It smacks of why are you whinging, there are kids dying in the world cause they haven't got food etc. Night night tonight, for a long time, I wondered why I wasn't happy, my folks did too. They fed and clothed me, and none of them were violent alcoholics, why couldn't I be happy? Turns out shame can be internalized even with a full belly lol. Magic Carpet 5846, friends telling OOP that his best friend was always in love with his now wife doesn't mean they always knew. That's the sort of thing that could have easily come out long after they started dating and talking about how they developed feelings. And it's not exactly hard to see why they would have asked to keep it from OOP, it isn't his business anyway. And there's nothing wrong with having feelings for someone, 
It's acting on them that's the problem. OOP could have been attracted to the waitress all day long, fucking her was the issue. The best friend had the decency to keep it a secret until long after OOP had cheated and ruined his marriage.